Have you ever heard of the Illuminati conspiracy? Well, it's attacking the Rosicrucians in the Golden Dawn, and I'm not going to stand for it. Stick around. I'm about to expose the true history of the Illuminati. I'm Golden Dawn Imperator David Griffin, and this is Magic 101. <laughs> Why is it that any time a spiritual leader talks about spiritual emancipation, rather than just initiation, we get attacked? If you've been around the occult community for any length of time, you've heard the stories. They sent us trademark threats, not to say we're Rosicrucians. They even sued us to stop using our Golden Dawn name. There have been even death threats. And of course, I've been attacked by them over and over, nonstop on the internet for many, many years. In fact, over the years, I've grown pretty thick skin, and this sort of stuff doesn't really bother me anymore. But when they attack the Golden Dawn and the Rosicrucians, it's time to do something. Here's the problem. Conspiracy theorists, you see, love to talk about the Illuminati and about the New World Order. But lately, they keep dragging the Golden Dawn and the Rosicrucians into their films. Let me show you what I mean. I don't think anyone would really take this first clip seriously, but what I'm about to show you, all of these are real clips. Can you believe it? They're actually implying I'm a reptilian space alien. You know, I protested the silliness on Facebook, and guess what happened? Somebody posted this picture of me, and the thing went viral. <laughs> All kidding aside, these conspiracy films are not just bad for me. They're bad for all Rosicrucians and Golden Dawn members as well. Let me show you what I mean. What happens behind the padlock doors of this windowless building? The tomb of Skull and Bones, Yale's oldest secret society. Its members include some of America's most powerful and privileged elite, all sworn to secrecy. The videotape provides a grainy glimpse into what appear to be the initiation rituals of a secret society that's been around since 1832. Argentina, México y todo el resto de América Latina. In the United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States of America. Bizarre, ancient, Canaanite, Luciferian leaders from around the world. Here's one last example, this time taken from the middle of a three and a half hour conspiracy, vi conspiracy video that claims that everything that's happened from JFK all the way through 9-11 is a conspiracy caused by the rich. Order of the Skull and Bones at Yale University. Discussion of secret societies is something of a minefield because it so easily invites ridicule. It is very difficult 
for the general public to accept that the super-rich leaders of their Western world can possibly be as mad and deranged as they actually are. The public, generally speaking, are sensible and level-headed people who have to balance their checkbooks, so they inevitably tend to laugh at stories about Satanists and occult believers. So, what's so bad about the Golden Dawn and the Rosicrucians being conflated with the Illuminati anyway? Well, this is a very dangerous and very subtle form of propaganda. Propaganda that not only turns the truth on its head, but deliberately obscures the true relationship between the Golden Dawn, the Rosicrucians, and the Illuminati. To show you the truth, I must first introduce you to perhaps the greatest alchemist who ever lived, the Count of Saint Germain. The Count of Saint Germain was a famous alchemist occultist, diplomat, secret agent, and composer. Even today, the Count of Saint-Germain is shrouded in legends, some of which were deliberately created by him himself. He was the epitome of a Renaissance man. He spoke German, English, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish very well, and they say French with a Piemontese accent. He played several instruments perfectly, he was knowledgeable in all the sciences, particularly chemistry and medicine, composed music, painted and wrote. Pieces of his music are still extant in the British Museum today. He was a consummate alchemist and was reputed to have prepared the Philosopher's Stone and even to have mastered its secret of extreme longevity. According to memoirs, the Count was slim, well-proportioned and of medium height. His features were pleasant, and his eyes possessed a great fascination. Those who looked into them were profoundly influenced. The legend of the brilliant Count preceded him to the distinguished courts and drawing rooms of Europe. Wherever he traveled, Saint Germain was welcomed as a scholar, a scientist, and raconteur. Most of his activities were shrouded in mystery, but it is known that he formed secret societies dealing with the occult and warned the crowned heads of many nations that the collapse of the French monarchy would eventually doom them as well. His one known manuscript, the Most Holy Trinisophia, written in a combination of modern languages and ancient hieroglyphics, is considered a classic of occult literature. The final years of Saint Germain's known life were spent in Hesse Castle, Germany. He divided his time between experiments in alchemy and meetings of his secret societies. Few people knew Saint Germain as well as Prince Charles, his last known confidant and benefactor. Despite the tendency in modern Freemasonry to downplay the importance of the Count of Saint Germain, or even to deny that he'd ever been a Mason, far too little is known yet today about the essential role actually played by the Count of Saint Germain in both Rosicrucian and Freemasonic history. It's well known that at the end of the 18th century, the Illuminati of Bavaria infiltrated many Freemasonic lodges and were poised to take control over much of Freemasonry. More than 200 years ago, here in Germany, in what used to be the independent electorate of Bavaria, a secret society was formed whose objective simply spelled world domination. Its strategy to abolish all religions and governments in order to take control of humanity under a unified state with no countries, no borders and under the command of a single leader. Its name, the Illuminati of Bavaria. On May the 1st, 1776, Adam Weishaupt, a young canon law professor at the University of Bavaria, founded the order of the Perfectibilitists also known as the Illuminati of Bavaria. Adam Weishaupt was born in Ingolstadt, Bavaria, in the south of Germany, in 1748. A convert from Judaism, he was raised and educated by Jesuits. A precocious intellectual, at the age of 28, he was dean of the Jesuit University of Canon Law at Ingolstadt. 
In spite of his apparent religious fervor and Catholic zeal, Weishaupt was obsessed with ancient Egyptian rites and rituals, and at the same time he also maintained regular contact with Freemasons, the historic enemies of the Catholic Church. The Illuminati were created within a Masonic lodge to which Weishaupt belonged. By that time, Freemasonry was already a prestigious secret society of long standing, and its excessive secrecy and closeness to the powers that be had turned it into the ideal nurturing ground for Weishaupt's order, who began to infiltrate it. Paradoxically, active members of the Catholic Church could be found among the ranks of the Illuminati. For his order, Weishaupt borrowed the strict, military-style, hierarchical structure of the Jesuits. The Count of Saint-Germain understood the spiritual danger posed by the rationalist Illuminati of Bavaria, who sought to infiltrate Freemasonry for their own purposes of establishing a new world order, overthrowing both church and state. In opposition to this Illuminati conspiracy, the Count of Saint-Germain gathered together all of the spiritual orders within and around Freemasonry. These included the Golden Rosicrucians, called Gold und Rosenkreuz in German, the Knights Templar of the Order of the Strict Observance in Germany, together with the Elu Cohen and the Martinistes in France, as well as the various lodges of Egyptian Freemasonry, deriving from Alessandro Cagliostro, with their alchemical mysteries deriving from the Rosa Ordine Magno de Rome of Raimondo di Sangro di San Severo in Naples in Italy. Saint Germain dispatched Charles of Hessen Castle to infiltrate the Illuminati and to check their expansion in Northern Europe. Using intelligence gathered by Charles, the alliance of spiritual orders gathered by the Count of Saint Germain were able to check the plans of the Illuminati and stop them from infiltrating and controlling all of Freemasonry. In fact, following the Freemasonic Convention in Wilhelmsbad of July 1782, the Illuminati threat was defeated and their right was later even prohibited in Bavaria in 1785. What most people don't know is that the Golden Dawn, our inner college of adepts, the RR at AC, is Rosicrucian. That's right, I'm not only a Golden Dawn Imperator, I'm a Rosicrucian Imperator as well. As a matter of fact, I stand in a direct line of Rosicrucian Imperators that includes Febron, the great Imperator of the Gold und Rosenkreuz Order, the Golden Rosicrucian Order, who vanquished the power of the Illuminati in Wilhelmsbad. Since the beginning, Rosicrucians have opposed the Illuminati and their visions of a tyrannical new world order. Considering the historical facts presented here, it should be obvious now that suggesting that I'm somehow a secret chief of the Illuminati is worse than absurd. It would be like accusing Obama of being president of Russia. As a Rosicrucian Imperator, I oppose the Illuminati's plans for a new world order as I oppose all forms of tyranny. In fact, my motto is pro salute popole, for the good of the people. I stand for the empowerment and the spiritual evolution of our people, not our repression. Our magical struggle didn't begin with the magical war between the Rosicrucians and the Illuminati, though. Our fight for the emancipation of humanity is far older than this. Hermetic lodges held a line against the encroaching darkness for millennia. And before us, the Magi of Light fought against the slaver magicians already in ancient Persia. Let my people go. The slaves are mine. As a matter of fact, come to think of it, myths about the Jedi and the Sith aren't really that far from the truth. Except, of course, that the real battle is a magical one. For millennia, we've held a line against the encroaching darkness, but still, even today, we remain unable to completely defeat the slaver magicians. 
These are people willing to use any kind of magic and to go to any ends, no matter how evil, to achieve their goals, even human sacrifice. After all, what do you think war is? With enemies as powerful as these, and as unscrupulous as these, is it any wonder that we magicians of light are losing this war? Oh, you didn't know that? Why else do you think the world is in such a mess? They've been in control for centuries. And we are still not strong enough yet to defeat them. But there is something that we can do already. We can empower the people with magic. We can help those souls on this planet that are ripe to complete their spiritual evolution and their ascension to the stars. This is the true purpose of the magic of light. The magic of light is a magic of spiritual liberation. It is, in fact, the magic of emancipation. You could even call what we're doing in giving this technology how to get out of here a sort of underground railroad. So what will you choose? To remain chained in a meat body on this planet throughout eternity? Or will you ascend with us to supreme consciousness among the stars? The choice is yours alone.